Hey guys, welcome back to the 4-1 Week. Today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks in Windows 8. We're going to talk a little bit about speeding your computer up as well as giving you control over the appearance and power options. Alright, so if you notice we're here on the start screen and what we want to do is get into the power options. If you notice right now, if I move the mouse over the bottom right corner, when this charms menu comes up, I'm going to select settings and then we're going to click on power. When we click on power, I get sleep, shutdown, and restart. If you're on a laptop, you may want the hibernate option. If you're on a desktop, that option isn't available to you. But on a laptop, I'm going to show you how to get there. So we want, what we want to do is click back out here and then move our mouse back and come to the search bar in the charms. And we're simply going to type the word power. Now, when apps comes up, there's nothing in there that I want, so I'm going to click on settings, and then we're going to choose power options. This is going to bring us into our desktop mode, and then under the control panel, hardware and sound, we're now in the power options. What I want to do is I want to change plan settings. So when my computer right here is running on the battery, after 20 minutes, my display will go dim. I can also adjust the brightness of the monitor without the time frame. So when I'm on battery, my brightness is set to the lowest possible setting. My display turns off after 45 minutes and my computer goes to sleep after two hours. Well, plugged in, I don't want it to dim the display and I also want the brightness all the way as high as it'll go. So I'll adjust that. The display can turn off after four hours and personally, I don't like to put the computer to sleep unless I'm gonna turn it back on pretty soon after I do so. If it's plugged in, I generally wouldn't want to put it to sleep. I'll just turn it off or put it in hibernate. So we'll save these settings. And after I do that, I want to go back to change plan settings. And we're going to click changed advanced power settings. Now up in here, we have a completely different list of more options we can do. And we can change different things, how they work as far as uh, hardware or software. So if you notice, under Internet Explorer, I can choose the JavaScript time frequency to either go by maximum performance or power settings. I can do my hard disk. I can do the USB settings, my graphics card. This particular laptop has two graphics cards, and I have it set to where when I'm running on the battery, it switches to the onboard card, and when I'm plugged in, it goes to the main auxiliary card or PC card for desktop purposes. Um, so we can come down and we can see that graphics processor. So the power state, if it's on battery, it's balanced. If it's plugged in, it's on max. I can do the same thing with different features of my computer. When we get through with that, we can move our mouse to this menu option and choose power settings. That's going to bring us back to that original screen. And notice we have some other options over here we can choose from. So generally, if you pick the first one, it might give you a menu that has all of them listed. So we're just going to choose require a password on wake up. I'll notice there's some options that are grayed out. So up here at the top, it's prompting me to change settings that are currently unavailable. That's just making sure I know that I'm changing something before I verify any of those settings. So if your laptop has a power button, you can choose what that power button does when you press it, whether it's on the battery or plugged in. If your laptop has a sleep button, or if this is for a desktop, you can choose what it does when you close the lid. I'm sorry, when you press the sleep button. And then if you have a laptop, obviously when you close the lid, you can choose what it does. If we come down a little bit, we can either require or not require a password on wake up whenever we're coming back from that sleep or that hibernation stage. And then coming back down here to the bottom, notice we have shutdown settings. This is where we can add in that hibernation settings for our charms menu. So if I click hibernate, give it a check mark and click save changes, now I can come over here, move my mouse to the corner, I can click on settings, then click power, and now I have that hibernation option, as well as sleep, shutdown, and restart. Now there is no way to change the order without possibly going into the registry, so we'll just leave that as it is for now. We can click back on the power options, and we're pretty much done with the power features, so what I want to do now is click on hardware and sound, and we get a ton of different things as far as hardware is concerned for our computer. And I just want to focus on a few right now. So under sound, if we click change system sounds, we get a little prompt menu that comes up and it brings us straight to this sound page. Now, if you don't like your mouse to make the click noises every time you click or when you click back or forward or things like that, 
you can turn that off. And right here under sound scheme, if we just click no sounds, that turns off every sound that has to do with Windows. Now, if you listen to music or if you're watching a movie or a video or something like that, that sound will still come through. This is just Windows sounds as a whole as far as anything you do with the mouse or the keyboard or any interactive with a website. So once we're finished with the sound, we'll come back to this hardware and sounds option menu. And then one thing I want to focus on is this autoplay. So autoplay is what comes up anytime you plug in any CD, flash drive, any type of device, you want to play a song or something like that, you can change the default playback device. For instance, when I insert a flash drive into my computer, it's going to automatically open the folder to view the files within the Windows Explorer of my desktop client. So if it was a picture, I could say I want to import the photos and video, uh, excuse me, import the photos and videos. I could say um, ask me every time. I could use Windows Live Gallery. I could automatically put them in my Dropbox account, things like that. I, I generally leave this on the default setting and just open up the folder. If it was a DVD, I could say play the DVD with Windows Media Center. If you didn't have that and you had VLC player, you could say play the DVD in VLC player. And when you insert a DVD, that's a video DVD, not a data DVD. It'll automatically open up VLC or Windows Media Center and start playing that DVD. If you had a Blu-ray, it would do the same thing. We'll click on hardware and sound. And the last thing I want to focus on is the display. So there's two things we want to focus on with the display. That's screen resolution and text size. So under here, we can change this text size. We can make it smaller or larger. And then to change the screen resolution, we have to right click on the desktop and select screen resolution. So under here, we can change the size that's stretched as far as our background and our desktop. So if I were to click on this and lower my screen resolution, once I click apply, it's going to make everything seem a little bit smaller or larger depending on how I scaled that. The last thing I want to show you is a little trick on how to speed up Windows 8 if you're on an older machine. If you're on a new machine that's running very fast and very efficient, this last little tip probably isn't for you. So what we want to do is we want to click on the libraries icon on the taskbar and that's going to bring up a file explorer. We want to get into computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on computer and we're going to select properties. When we get this screen up, we'll, I'm going to make it a little larger so it's easier to see. We're going to come over here to the left side and select advanced system settings and then it's going to bring up another screen and under performance we're going to click on settings. Now what I have chosen might not be what yours has chosen and that's okay we can change it here. It says let me choose what's best for my computer. We can adjust for best performance or best appearance. Now if you like the Windows 8, the flat bold look, that's okay. It actually runs a lot more efficient and a lot faster than Windows 7 with the arrow. But if you're on a computer that's older, that's supported Windows 7, it will support Windows 8. And this is just another feature to make it run that much smoother. So if you choose adjust for best appearance, it's basically going to turn everything on to make it look the best to you. If you choose adjust for best performance, it's pretty much going to turn everything off to where it flows more efficiently and things open a little bit quicker and things like that. So there's just a little bunch of lists of things that it actually turns on and off. I like to just let Windows choose what's best. It's only two things that it changes and that's perfectly okay. Alright, so that's a few tips and tricks in Windows 8 to make it look a little bit better, make it speed up a little bit faster if you're having an issue with that. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.